everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today is a very exciting day because I'm going to be showing you how you can paint for yourself this gorgeous line fist. I'm going to be breaking it down step by step. I'm going to explain all the techniques, all the color mixes, everything you need to know so you can create this for yourself at home. Now you can do just a single painting or you might notice that this is part of a 30 painting collection and I would certainly invite you to take part of all of it, whatever is better for you. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He's going to make sure that you see everything you need to see by focusing the cameras on the techniques and things that I'm demoing so you can create this for yourself. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to paint this. Today's colors are titanium white, Mars black, phthalo green, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, cad red medium, cad yellow medium, Naples yellow light. And we're going to start out on our eight by eight surface, painting the whole thing a mix of phthalo blue and ultramarine blue, the whole thing. So I'm gonna get my brush wet, drag off the extra, mix these two together and paint the whole surface a mix of phthalo and ultramarine. As soon as you have the entire surface painted blue, you can begin the gridding process. Now to do the gridding process, I'm going to take a tool called a T-square ruler, and I'm going to take a chalk tool, and I'm going to make a one inch by one inch grid on my eight by eight canvas. So every inch on my ruler, I'm gonna make a mark, and then I'm gonna use the ruler to make a, a vertical and horizontal lines on those marks creating the grid. Then I will go across the top from left to right, numbering one through eight, and then I'll go down the left side from top to bottom, numbering one through eight as well. And that's gonna let me use this grid to get the image transferred on. So I've got my grid on, I've got my squares numbered, and how I'm gonna use that is I will draw only what I see in each square. So if I'm on row six here, horizontal row six, and I come over to vertical row two, I can see that the nose of the lionfish enters the grid square here, exits here, and kind of comes into this space to about there. So I'm not trying to draw all of a lionfish, I'm just drawing this line here. And then if I notice that just a little bit of this comes here, but we can see some of his little things there, I can draw those in. That's a good way of doing that. Let's do that through this whole thing. Using this method, we're gonna get the whole thing drawn in. So once you have this very complicated spiny little fish drawn in, you can call that step one. That was a lot, wasn't it, John? Mm, that was a lot of drawing. It's a lot of drawing. I'm not even sure I needed every line that I gave myself here, but I just wanted to keep some of the sense of directionality and what was happening because he's so many layers and so many thin layers and so many patterns, mm -hmm. just so much. So trying to simplify that seemed key at this moment. You know, especially when you're doing something really complicated, sometimes simplifying where you can can be the thing that gets you through to at least getting started in your project. So let's yeah. come back on step two. We're going to start painting a fish. So sometimes when something is super involved, super layered, like a lionfish is, I will find the most difficult area in the painting, I think it would be to paint around other objects mm -hmm. and get that in first. And it's also sometimes the most distant. So I'm going to get my number four round wet and I'm going to take my phthalo blue and ultramarine blue together a bit on that and come get some white as you do, because these spines are almost white in their base and then they have some interesting stripes. But I think what's gonna be easiest for us to do right here is to start painting in these light little shapes and then later come back, right? And paint the little stripies on them. They're stripies too. And the reason I did the blue a little I mean, the white, a little, not white, little blue is because these are somewhat transparent hmm. and um, not as bright because they are back into the water. It's an interesting sort of event there. 
I'm just painting these back. Maybe pull that in and catching that shape. So these lines kind of curved upward and the other lines kind of curve back. Now I'm going to come here and catch perhaps this lower version of this because again, it would be very hard to paint this in later. Mm. You know, I have to think about it a bit sometimes. How am I going to get this in? Let's see, there's some that way. You can see the strokes are just kind of curved and light. At this stage, I do kind of want to put in some of my stripes just so that they show and they're there. Mm. The first thing I'll do is I'll take my my red and my yellow and I'll let it be more into my red and I may even get some of my burnt umber into that. Make sure I've got a nice amount because I've got a lot of stripies to do. Stripies are involved. So these are like little dashes that are happening mm -hmm. on these striped fins. And you can see I'm just dashing the brush. Kind of creates it really fast, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's like, oh, okay, I see it. It is a lot of dashy dashy. It's a lot of dashy dashy. This is going to be step two, the dashy dashy step. Is it? The dashy dashy step of distant fins. Yes. Well, it doesn't look too bad. There's, there's not that many to do. There's not that many to do, and it's kind of nice to see, oh, like, how would I paint such a complicated subject, right? Because sometimes we feel that as artists. How would I, line fish are wonderful, wonderful fish, but we might opt into goldfish or betas because we look at the line fish and go, yeah, I'm not taking that on today. <laughs> That's a lot. That's not going to be something I take on today. I'm going to grab a little bit more of my red into this mix. So it's a little bit deeper, and if I need to, might get a little smidge of my thalo to darken it again. Because over here that these little stripes are just a little bit darker. Mm. Just painting the dashy dashes. Or dashy and dashy dashes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I probably owe money now. No one tell Chris. Can't afford the licensing fee. Not today. Not any day, man. I had Kardashian licensing fee money. I would buy more art supplies and add more stuff in my studio. That's just what I would do. Now that I've got these kind of in, I'm going to rinse out. And I'm kind of go back to my initial blue and white mix. This one a bit brighter than the other two, but still kind of off, not a pure white, right? There's just a bit of blue into it. And now we're going to make these little marks. This one's gonna kind of curve back. So I need better flow. Sometimes you gotta add a little more water to get the flow. Parts of their fins are almost entirely transparent. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. The membrane is very see-through, and all you see is the patterning. Everything on this little fish is patterned to say, I am poisonous. Do not touch me. Well, I've got my slightly lighter thing. I'm going to come here, and on the edge of some of my fins, I'm going to add just a touch. I know this is silly, of a white spot. Sometimes their fins have a bit of a, you can even come in and exaggerate some. Just, just a little touch while you've got it here. Maybe a couple of places I can brighten the, the dashing on that part of the fin. Just something. Just something we can do, my friends. All right, back into my orange. 
My don't touch me, I super poisonous colors. <laughs> Those Look are good at me. <laughs> don't eat me. You will have a tummy ache. Mm, at best. At best? Yeah, at, at best. best. They're like deadly poisonous, aren't they? Mm-hmm. When I was little, I guess we kept lionfish. My dad was uh, big into aquatics. I only ever did freshwater. Mm -hmm. so I too. never kept lionfish. Not something I could handle doing. But look, that was a lot. So let's call that step two. Okay. <laughs> you did it. Distant airy fins are done. <laughs> We're going to dry this. And then I might take a clean brush and kind of get some of the excess chalk off around it. Or I may wait till later in the painting, probably later in the painting. Let's dry it. Let's come back and we'll paint more of the fish. Going forward again, I'm going to be looking at things that would be hard to get to in his complicated patterns and paint those first so I can layer the next layers on top of it. To that end, I'm going to kind of work in some tail. Because right, we like the tail. Mm -hmm. That way he can swim around. And to do the tail, I'm going to take a smidge of my pad yellow and a smidge of my Naples yellow light. I'm going to mix them together. And let's get a bunch of white into that mix. That's fun. A right. bunch of white into that. And let's paint this fabulous little tail that color. Sometimes I have to add more uh, water to my paint to get to be fluid. And it's interesting when I'm working uh, large areas like this. Mm -hmm. Because, like, uh, I'll notice, you know, on something small like that, you might not notice that you don't have enough fluidity. But when you're working bigger areas, you'll be like, man, the paint is not flowing. Your pad is kind of well conceived there. Now I've got a lot of this color, and I may come in even a little bit into my Naples yellow. In a smidge, I think, look at ultramarine as a way of cooling it. It's going to green it a bit. And then come here. And just a smidge under that. Kind of, you know, shade the tail. Because <clears throat> he's got, got shading. He's got layers. He's got developmental, you know, te uh, texture and compli complicated color and all that. To kind of get that here, I know I'm going to come back with you know stripes and all kinds of things. But it's a good time to use out that color. Get back into my yellow and my white. Even though I'm going to be working a lot of stripes and things, this is nice to. Kind of get in there now. So just a little bit darker there, right? With our cooler color. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to dry real fast, and then I'll add some stripes at least to the tail. I think I'm going to stay in my uh, cat's tongue drawing for the stripes. Yeah. I'm going to go red and yellow, okay. more into the red. I'm making a nice bright orange. Turn on until my brush, make sure that this works well. And I'm going to begin with not my furthest out stripe, but kind of that angle one. And you can see the stripes are not of even um, diameter. They're kind of thick and thin. Mm -hmm. and they have a bit of an angle. So that's important to capture. Things that make uh, these animals uniquely them. If you can capture any of that part of them, it's helpful in their rendering. That's kind of a nice little stripe. Maybe this one's thick, but then it's thinner there. So that's lovely. We've got a little stripey on the tail. And this color, fantastically, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to add just a smidge. Smidge of my thalo, I think. So it kind of makes it darker. And I'm going to come here. 
and start to add I'm not going to go all the way out. I just want to start here. Is what happens is you've got this fin actually is forward into him here mm -hmm. and coming back this way. And then we have another even slightly darker fin and kind of in shadow that's going to be peeking here. You can see why what I mean by it's complicated to layer these. Okay, what I mean. Mm -hmm. I'll bring that up towards the fish because there's going to be a layer over this covering it. Back into my slightly darker kind of red there. I'm kind of making a scalloping, if you can see that. I scalloped that brush stroke. Just sort of little curvies in. I'll go ahead and kind of start to exaggerate that where I know I'm going to have lines. See? Yeah. I know I'm going to have them. And then we'll paint that in a bit. Very much the same in our darker kind of orange that I have more muted here. Mm -hmm. A little implied scallop back there, even though it's in the distance. And we are going to have a lot of fins over it, so we don't want to get too intense with how we're doing our. I'm going to bring a little darker. And scallops to sort of define those little lines. And same here, a little bit darker, just to get those in. Rinse out vigorously, my friends. And if your brush, this is a number eight cat's tongue, so it comes to a point. If your brush doesn't have a nice point, you'll want to do the next part with a round. You don't have to use the exact brush I have. That is not a thing. But you will want a brush that gives you a good point. I'm going to just a little bit of this mix into my white. So it's, yes, it's just still part of that thin color. But it's lighter. I'm going to come here. Anywhere I brought those to a little point, I drag out a fine, fine fin, mm. fine fin bone. I'm peeking over your shoulder there. You can kind of see those fine little fin bones. Are fun. Oh, yeah. Fine fin bones are fun. Fine fin bones are fun. I'm gonna get a little darker yellow and red onto here. Do a similar thing. There we go. Those fins. We're going to say that that, my friends, is step three because that was quite a lot, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That was a very complicated little fin, but you're getting him in. When you get him done, you're going to be so, like, feeling good in your heart because you'll be like, I did it. I did it. I painted this crazy fish now. <laughs> so I'm going to come back in step three and show you the next layer that we're going to need to put on to accomplish him. A lot happening in Mr. Fishy Fish. So much. So I've really got to figure out, again, how can I break it down and where can I simplify it? I've got a forward-facing fin that just does this crazy thing here I'm going to have to paint. I've got this big fan fin here. I've got lots of little poisonous spines that are all colorful. He's super stripy. And there's a lot happening in his eye. So just know we have a lot happening. Mm -hmm. Just a lot. So for this upper part, I know I've got to put some stripes in. I've got to do some stuff, but I think I'm going to make some turquoise, which is my thalo blue, my thalo green. And I'm going to go ahead and get my Naples yellow into it. You can see it 
does this really wild green. When I lighten that with white, it's almost like the vintage mint that we would see at maybe like a, a resale shop. And bring this around. Is so many stripes here. But I wanted this sort of color when I put the stripes in, kind of going on. I'll bring that underneath him and pull that down. Oops, so pretty. Maybe a little bit right there coming down. And as I come back, I can get a little bit more into a blue. And again, we're going to be striping him up. So many stripes. So we're just painting in this little section here. Kind of creating the basis for what's happening. I feel it's going to be easiest to sort of get in some of the different little stripey stripes that Mr. Kitty Pants has. This is my belief. I'm going to take a little of my red into my burn sienna and I'll mix those two together and we're gonna say let's go right here to the center where there's a kind of a really noticeable spine and noticeable stripe and we'll bring that in again on my cat's tongue on the toe you can do it on a round brush if I need to darken at any point I'll just add some ultramarine into my burn sienna some of these get much darker and then there's a, another little kind of forward facing, very dark stripe. It comes and ends here. And it has another little bit that off center comes down. Off center one that comes down here as well. I might even need to get into black on this one because this this stripe, which comes across here, it comes across everything, even the eye. Mm -hmm. It's very dark, and I will just make that a thick bit right there, so you can kind of see how those stripes are coming in. There is maybe a bit of a partial stripe right here because there'll be a white little end coming back. We certainly have. I'm going to get more paint onto my brush. I went and grabbed some blue. I just want a dark color sort of touched. Right there going forward. Now I'm going to dry this because I want everything to sort of flow uh, well over the surface. And to that end, I may even switch into my number four round. You know, I might do that even now. I can always come in. Take this moment to clean up my grid while I mentally reset. Because, <laughs> you know, things are dry. So you can kind of see how your delicate work is visually. You need to do that. I'm going to get into my number four. Get into my number four. And this is a bit more into my orange space. So my yellow and my red. And I'm going to come here and put in some other stripes. Other stripes. You can have more yellow sometimes. You can have more red. Be playful. It's okay. Even though he's, he's very poisonous, he is also playful. If you look at how he is, <laughs> he's like, I'm very interesting. You will never see anything as interesting as me. I can even come here and put some little spots there. Now, I may help myself out because there's this weird white lining I'm going to put in. I'm going to use a little of my green and white. And right here, 
want it to be even more noticeable. I'm going to come in with this little line. I'm going to come forward. Oops, that was not intentional. <laughs> it's just me being uh, awkward. And I'm going to bring this little line up and over. And those kind of let me know where some stuff starts and stops. Because that can be kind of hard to see when you first get in there. Yeah. Maybe add some highlighted white as you do. How are we doing? Lovely, isn't it? These are just more involved. Where are we going? That looks okay. And I can always come in and get a little more red. And add some color to my stripe. You can also tone your CAD red with black, believe it or not. In, in this instance, it won't deaden the color too much, and it'll give you some of the other dark stripes that you need to have. Like we need to have a dark stripe that kind of comes behind the eye. It goes into that. One needs to come back further. And I'm going to take this one down. You see, just building those mm -hmm. things up. Now, I'm going to kind of come to where I think I'm going to have little spines. I've got two weird spines. I've got this. Actually, I may come back. I'm going to call this a step and then come back and show you spines. Because, again, I'm going to break this down small enough. So you can get here and then get to the next place. Does that sound okay. good? Yeah. Okay, cool. So there's these weird sort of spines that are in kind of the middle and they do this like pullback thingy. And then I've got to do these little flag spines that come up off the stripes. So I think the only way is I've got to get the little fly, the little pull spines. They're weird. I don't know what they are. If you're, if you're a fish expert, I'm sure you do. I'm going to take a little of my Naples yellow. And my cad red, making this really wonderful coral. And what I'm going to do is try to make some nice, delicate little Aren't those fun? Mm -hmm. Also, don't touch those. <laughs> don't touch any part of this fish. That's right. This fish is not for petting. Yeah, you know, that wonderful fish that that guy catches and they play the game together? This is not that fish. No, I'm worried that maybe that fish was just a CG fish. I would be very sad for it, but I feel like it's sort of possible. I'm going to also take maybe a little bit of this color here. There's a kind of little fish thing there and a little, these fish have weird. I'm going to use this color right here. I love these little spots that we find. That are happening on him. I'm like, oh, there's a lot going on, yo. A lot. So much. You get a little of my darker red. Because it's nice to mix it up and say that both of these are there. Woo! We're so good. Okay. So our stripes have little flaggies. 
You got to make a decision. Do you want to start with the white flaggy or do you want to start with the brown flaggy? I think in this one, I'm going to start with the white flaggy. So I'm going to take my phthalo blue and my phthalo green together, make a kind of phthalo turquoise color. Get a bunch of white into it as you do. And I'm going to come up on the stripes like this. Let's see what stripe would have in this one right here. There'd be one right here. And I'm also going to kind of feather back this bin or whatever it is. It's kind of cool. All right. See if that'll work again for us. It should. And some of these do cover, that's why we had to paint those spines when we did, right? Mm -hmm. and there should be, come back a little bit, this one should have when it goes up kind of straight. I'll be coming back blending some of that orange in, but it just gives me this little starting place to discuss spinage. And then back here, I feel like we've got another little spine. Spine spines everywhere. And then maybe a few collections of these guys, right? Mm -hmm. That we're going to see here. There could be some here. I'm kind of almost dry brushing and letting a lot of the canvas sort of show through. There we go. That's nice. Yeah. Those are having a little moment. So how we're going to kind of make them part of him is we're going to need to stripe it. Now, we can do it wet into wet or dry it. I think I'm actually going to work a little bit over it wet because I want some blending to go. But if it doesn't work, I will dry it. I'm going to get into my kind of orange color that I had in, you know, like maybe this stripe. Blend that a bit. Hmm, that'll work. And then let's say how fun is that? You should have some too. Let's go get it. Do you have stripes too? Of course you do, because you're trying to tell people, don't eat me. You won't like the result at all. I think while I'm at it, I'm going to grab maybe a mix of my pad in Naples and make these two, you know, ones more off the eyes, a little more off of this. And then I'll stripe it with white. Is that creative like that? Mm hmm. Now, some of these I'm going to come back. I've got more brown. You can always get a little bit of the... You want to be really careful when you tone the colors with, you know, a contrast just so that you've got a little handle on it. Pick that up a bit. I like it. You can see we start from the color on the stripe is the is the thing here. Whatever else you've got going on. Lots of little stripes. Lots of little stripes on these little friends. Now I may do an interesting thing. I'm going to get a lot more white onto my brush. It won't be bright white. It'll be toned. But I want it to be noticeably brighter than the original. And just at the front, 
I'm going to mark these little stripes. Just at the front. Like, maybe here at the tip. Mm -hmm. Just to show, because they have, like, these spines that go up there. And the spines are different tone than the... That's looking really good. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know, you do these and you're like, it'll never work. And then you're like, it's totally working. And put a little white mark in there and then maybe one right there. Let's call that. We did a lot there. That was a lot. Yeah. Right? So we're going to say that's that step. And we're going to come back. And guess what? Hmm. Paint more fish. So it's a great time. If everything is dry, you can come up and clean up some of your chalk here on step six, just so we don't get overwhelmed by everything we've got on there. You can always come back with your background color if you find that your chalk isn't wanting to clean up. Did that make sense? Yeah. Um, but it's just nice to, ha you know, keep it as long as you need it, but you don't want the visual noise as soon as you don't need it anymore. Right. Because you want to be able to see what you have clearly. So when you're painting, you know what you need to do. Now, I'm going to begin on this. I think I'm going to start with a little of my red and my yellow. It's kind of an orange. I like that. And I'm going to... And I come forward, I'll blend out the beginnings of this fin with that. And it's pretty involved. It like literally is down into all this space. These, the fin is an in, incredible structure. So I'm going to just get this in. We've got a lot to blend and do and think about. Right, because also, we'll have this, these sort of like little structures between the spines. And I'm going in, you know, with my, my orange just because I can add darker colors and I can add lighter colors, but I just want to get a basis of what's happening. And I may even come here and give myself one of my spines just so I know where the end of this is. So let's get a little bit of our yellow and our white. I'm going to come right about here. So I can see the end of that one particular spine, if that makes sense. Because I do have more spines that'll come forward. They will do this. They'll let's get some more cad yellow into this so it's sort of standy outy. Standing outy is very helpful this. Right? Because this one will then And then he has a little friend that does that. And there's a little series of friends that do this. So it, we've got to, you know, really, really address that. The elephant in the room, which isn't really an elephant at all. <laughs> it's cool. So I'm going to take and I'm going to make a little phthalo turquoise and I'm going to do some crazy. I'm going to add a little bit of my cad red into it. I know. Start with some little stripies that are kind of maybe in the fins. Fin patterns are a whole event, my friends. I'm flicking that out. Just my number of kids, I'm just trying to make a little irregular. Get 
bit more orange, more cad red into that mix, and then maybe come there a bit. I think I want to get back orange here, like noticeably so. So I'm going to get my yellow and my red back together. You can see me sort of work out that stripe a little bit. We're not doing bad. We're not doing bad. We're doing good. Rinse out. There's a lot of rinse out because there's just a lot going on in the color of all of this. That it can be really hard to even know is happening. Meaning that in there. We don't lose any of that. So a little bit of our cad yellow, definitely a lot of our white. Again, if you need to switch yeah. to your round brush, you should absolutely do that. Aren't these just wonderful? I think they're wonderful. I think they look great. I don't think they'd be wonderful if I petted it. Not a petting fish. Not, not a petting fish. You know, I don't know a whole lot of them that are petting fish. <laughs> None of them are like, you know what I really love right now mm -hmm. is if you'd pet. You know, there's there's been a few that somehow get domesticated and do Weird things fish. that fish don't normally do. Yeah. I'm going to get some really clean water. And back into my uh, phthalo blue, phthalo green, and Naples yellow color right here. Sometimes it's nice to get a little more blue into it. And then I'm going to get white. Make some interesting stuff. You can grab spine color, just be playful. I'm going to add some of these brighter, interesting greens that happen in the fin. That's wild. How's that looking? I say we call that six and then come in and resolve some of the details and more of the striping. I just don't want us to get so far into what we have happening here that we just can't take it all in. Because again, he's visually busy. Mm -hmm. He's a busy, busy fish. Not just busy in activity. He's just busy visually. Like, like if I you're a predator, you're like, ah, there's too much going on there. <laughs> So we're going to come in and just kind of get some details and highlights and fun colors going and just really enjoy ourselves. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow color and kind of in green make a much lighter color, if you can see. I'm going to make sure that these are not maybe some lighter there, single tone. Right? We want to be colorful. This is how Mother Nature says, back off, dude. Hmm. <laughs> it's not going to be good for anybody. A little bit of my red. And if I have a little bit of my phthalo turquoise going, I'll grab that. It's a nice way of like toning it, right? Without getting into the black yet. I'm just feathering that. In a bit. 
so that the, the fin has distinctive structure. Because it truly, 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 truly would. Now, also with this kind of dark color, here the fin starts to do a weird thing. It kind of comes in in sails. Hmm. Like little sails. It's just a. Like on a boat. Yeah, it's the weirdest thing, but it's, you don't want to miss them because it's definitely a very, like, lionfish thing to have. And if you're happy with those, then you come in with some, like, red. Oops, got too wet on my brush. Whenever that happens, I just come back with a clean brush. Sometimes I get too much water on my round brush because a drop of water is hiding up the handle. So, you know, add those bright pops of red because they're just going to add a lot to our fish. We do want our fish to be just wonderful. And I'm going to get into my yellow and my red. And maybe in the center of some of that fin kind of get, kind of get interesting with it. Take some orange and pull that in. Now, weird thing is about to happen. I'm going to take a little of my blue and a little of my black. It's a very dark blue-black color. And up here, I'm going to make a dot. A little dot. I did not know until studying this that lionfish had all these little dots. I had no idea. Mm. I'm going to even add a little dot to this fin right there. Dot, 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 dot. It's a lot of dot. It's a lot of dot. I'm going to take my phthalo blue and my phthalo green and a lot of white. You hear in the dot? If I need more water, I'm going to get it. Just a touch of highlight around the dot. Maybe a touch of highlight in the stripe. So you're like kind of making another stripe in the stripe. Mm-hmm. I'm making another stripe in the stripe. Right here. Stripes within stripes. I'm going to take some of this color. I'm going to get like kind of crazy with it. And I'm going to add some of that right there. And then coming up here, using this, I'm going to put in some extra stripes. There's some extra stripes. What? I know. So much going on. So much happening with these colors, right? Like a very light value. I'm going to highlight that some. Not everything, but just some. Isn't that lovely, that little bit of structure? A lot going on, right? Say that right there. It's doing beautifully. 
needs a little more stripe, and then we get to do the eye. Can you believe where we're at? I know. It looks great. Who knew painting lionfish was going to be so much fun? Hmm. Did you guess that? I did not. You did not? I did not either. I feel like this is a great time to come in with the bright stripes and colors. Just because, you know, we would be like wowed by them mm. in this moment. He's very good. He really is. Go ahead and get some of my turquoise. Put some under here. And give him just a nice little line. Little bits of design interest. All right, come back. The last thing we're going to do is... It, oh, my gosh, look at you. Looks really good. <laughs> we're going to do his very involved little eye when we come back. All right. Still with my number four round, I'm going to begin the eye. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little of my um, ultramarine and green to create more of a teal and just even though i've got to put the stripe back i'm going to come in and just sort of paint this teal circle let's start with a teal circle shall we that's not bad <laughs> i'm going to get my naples yellow into the in, in the mix as you do Thinking about that there. Lots of my white on my brush. Add a little reflection there. And again, his eye also wildly has uh, stuff that makes the pattern of the eye hard to see. I know it's weird, but he does. Kind of getting a dark, more thinned paint. Wild. This fish's eye is wild. Last touch, John. Mm. We have a lot going on in there, but this is our last touch. We're going to grab some just white. And right here. And right here, add that little dot. And then just one little one right there. That's what it is. His eye is like crazy, right? Yeah. I feel like, you know, I can clean up the last of my chalk. Got to pick a color to sign it with. What are you thinking? Mm, it's hard to tell. I don't know. He's amazing, right? I that bet reddish, so many people. I, if orange. you're at home right now and you're squealing, we're squealing with you. Yeah. Th I hope you're feeling that way about your painting where you're like, oh, this is so awesome. I hope they are because this is a really cool one. Really did turn out great. So great. All right. I am happy. I hope you guys are happy. 
this was a thing. Mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun. I bet it was really interesting to see how a complicated object, like a lionfish, this beautiful patterned animal can be painted. And yet if you break it down into smaller bites, it becomes a lot simpler. Now, as I said before, it's okay to just do this single video, that's fine. But I would love to point out that the next video in our series that we're going to be painting is these wonderful pop and poppies. I think they're so gorgeous. There's sunlight coming through and I would love to invite you to come back and take part of that. Be good to yourself, be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.